Hello guys, my name is Anna and I vlog daily from my country Ukraine because I believe the world needs to know more about real life in my country during these challenging times. If you support Ukraine and you want to witness our victory together, please subscribe and join the beautiful and friendly and wise community of uh, our channel. Today we had a difficult night, but saying this phrase I realized that all nights in Ukraine are difficult and dangerous because we have Russian orcs as our neighbors and it's really difficult to live with terrorists near you who threaten the world with nuclear weapons and want to erase your country. This is a very black and white, very evil versus uh, good war, so I believe we cannot be neutral. Once again, if you're not neutral and you support the victory of freedom, democracy and Ukraine, please subscribe and share and like the videos. So, uh, today Russians targeted Lviv. Lviv is the largest city in Western Ukraine, one of our cultural and educational and economic capitals. It is also an important logistics hub, a place where many military go through training, volunteers spend lots of time and even sometimes during war you can meet tourists from um, European countries. So Lviv was targeted at night and once again this is a traditional terrorist tactics that Russians use when people are sleeping in their homes, they uh, target them. Tonight they have uh, sent 10 Calibre missiles on Lviv and with the help of air defense systems, 7 of Calibres were stopped and 3 ruined people's houses and people's life. As a result of this brutal attack, uh, four people are dead, dozens are injured and the search and rescue operation still continues. I would like to remind you that Lviv is very close to the border of the European Union and it is approximately 1000 kilometers from the front lines. This is just a reminder that every part of Ukrainian territory is dangerous and so far I cannot invite you to discover Ukraine. Why? Because it is dangerous everywhere. I often describe my region where I live, once again in the western part of Ukraine, in Lutsk, Volyn, as semi-safe, but semi is an important word here, because just as Lviv tonight, any location in Ukraine can be dangerous, because Russians, they are not following any military or political ideas, they follow their very close to Nazi ideology in which they want to destroy all Ukraine, they want to kill all of the Ukrainians and then continue spreading misery, uh, which they call Ruski Mir. So, um, another thing that this brutal attack on Lviv uh, reveals is actually that Ukraine greatly needs uh, air defense systems like Patriots. That's why we talk so much about them. That's why we ask so much. Why? Because every patriot saves life. It is not just about having something. It is not about money. Stop thinking about Ukrainian supplies that way. It is about saving lives. Perhaps Kyiv, which is very often targeted today, is the most protected city of Ukraine. And many cities, come on like mine, they don't have, like, they are not important strategically and hopefully they are not targeted, but from the other point of view, in case they are targeted, <laughs> we don't have things that will cover the sky and create an iron dome above us. And each of missiles carries destruction and death. And today in Lviv, four people are dead, who totally did not expect they will die from a Russian missile. But when you are in Ukrainian, if you are in Ukrainian, you are in great danger. And actually, this is an unbelievable feeling, something that I watched in the movies about the Second World War and could not believe is possible after people witnessed the crimes of Nazi regime. And another problem is that orcs have developed skills and money decide a lot. And they are able to avoid sanctions in uh, their search for the details that they need for the production of missiles. And once again, each missile carries death and destruction to Ukraine. 
So according to the uh, analysis of uh, Ukrainian intelligence services, uh, they are able to produce 25 calibers, uh, two Kinjal missiles, uh, 35X101 missiles and five ballistic missiles monthly. So you see they are able to produce lots of deaths for Ukraine uh, monthly, which to some extent demonstrates that sanctions do not fully work as we expected them, because according to the vision, <laughs> we believed uh, they won't be able to back up themselves with the details, electronics that they need for the production of all of that. Lots of investigations that were conducted on the places where these missiles explode or where drones are, uh, fallen uh, demonstrate that many of these weapons have foreign components coming from the countries that are actually our allies. How is it possible? Well, uh, we may speak about this global support of Ukraine from the political perspective, but business has always been very cruel and when it is about money, uh, people often are looking for the ways to continue earning. That's why uh, there are countries like Kazakhstan, for example, who did not support sanctions against Russia. And surprisingly, lots of European companies that were previously selling their electronic details to Russia started selling them to Kazakhstan. And the number like of this uh, products of this uh, details that Kazakhstan um, bought grew exponentially. So, of course, it's obvious for everyone who observes this situation that perhaps Kazakhstan buys this detail from European suppliers to resell them later to Russia that cannot buy them directly. And it continues. And it's not just about money. It's not just about avoiding sanctions. It's about four people killed tonight in Lviv by a Russian missile. It's about hundreds of Ukrainians killed monthly or even thousands of Ukrainian killed monthly as a result of Russian missile attacks at nights, at dawns, when people are vulnerable, sleeping with their children in their houses, in their pajamas. This is something that perhaps you cannot like imagine. It's difficult to imagine with a normal human brain, but uh, this is uh, our Ukrainian reality. And when you see these photos, when you see these children with teddy bears in destroyed corridors and they are alive, you feel happy for them. But actually, all of their world got ruined. And, uh, and still there will be people found. I did not want to quote it because it was all over Ukrainian Facebook. It was about one girl. I posted a photo of her. She was with a flag. And it was during the Russian missile attack on Kyiv. And people were saying how strong and resilient uh, this girl is. But they were also talking about uh, rescue services that were carrying parts of human bodies in the elevator, in boxes. And that uh, no matter how hard you try to close everybody's eyes, you cannot evacuate all people who look at the remains of their house and together they can see things no one would like to see, like human ribs in the box. And um, I personally also try to protect myself from such photos, from uh, such information. But uh, when I read or when I learn about that, I feel like I have to feel, I have to understand this is what actually is happening. War is very um, awful. Uh, Ukrainian writer Victoria Amelina, uh, who died as a result of a missile attack on Kramatorsk, her coffin was closed. So these destructions, they are very awful, they are very ugly, and we have to remember about that when doing business or when accepting that somebody looks for a way to avoid sanctions. It is not just about the supply of electronic device. It is about corpses of children collected in the box in parts. I'm sorry if it's too hard on you, but like um, it cannot be too hard on me because that's a part of life of my country. And um, 
I am very grateful for those of you who address your politicians, who address your businesses. And we still know that there are many who continue supporting Russia, who continue selling or buying something from Russia and thus investing in Russian war in Ukraine because their economics did not stop. Life in Russia actually is normal. War is only in Ukraine. Uh, their people, they don't feel it. The number of mobilized is not that great and they typically mobilize them from depressive regions where people like average life duration because of alcoholism and poverty is really low. And uh, for them, it may be even a success to go and loot a washing machine in Ukraine. Otherwise, they would spend their miserable life and drown somewhere in a puddle because of alcohol abuse. So we have to realize that many good people who were able to change Ukraine and who were possibly able to change the world die in Ukraine daily. And Russians continue living normal life and are still able to buy details they need for their missiles then to kill us at night. So perhaps something is really wrong in this world. Thank you for the support and understanding that you demonstrate. I'm really grateful for the community of our channel. Thank you for buying me coffees, becoming my patrons and thus supporting more projects. I have one more idea that hopefully we'll share with you soon and might be useful for the future of the world. I mean, like in conversational aspect. Also, remember to introduce yourself to our merch because uh, we are looking for the 500 uh, buyer or a friend because once again I cannot say that these are buyers these are people who want to demonstrate their support to Ukraine and to start conversations about the support needed and we will send to our 500s friend and customer a book uh, a history of Ukraine by Oleksandr Bali. You can find the links to my social media and I am active on Twitter and Instagram with a little bit different contact and also a link to our shop below this video. Thank you once again for your support. Slava Ukraini!